Hey everyone, so great to be here. Uh, we're gonna start on time. Uh, welcome to the Echo Hour workshop about how to build a cloud connected AR VR app in 15 minutes or less. We're gonna have a really, really good fun uh, talking about augmented reality, a virtual reality, and, and talking about use cases of these technologies. And I'm gonna share a few cool demos. Um, thank you so much for being here. Hope you're all healthy and safe. Um, and thanks to the hackathon organizers for inviting us to run this workshop. Uh, make sure you are using the link we provided to register um, to uh, our software for free and getting our premium tier. So definitely take advantage of that. And we are also uh, sponsoring a prize as well. So definitely check that out. Uh, so we're Echo AR, we're a cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality, providing tools and network infrastructure for developers who want to build AR VR applications. I'm gonna start by saying hello. My name is Alon, I'm the founder of Echo AR. Um, we're a New York-based company. I did my master's in computer science at um, Columbia University specializing in AR, VR, and undergrad in computer science and electrical engineering, so certified nerd, and a big believer in augmented and virtual reality. Let's start by level setting a little bit. Uh, these terms being are thrown around a lot. What is augmented reality, what is virtual reality? Some of you might have known uh, what these terms mean, but let's level set. Uh, virtual reality is when everything around you is digital. You're fully immersed in a 3D environment. Your vision is occluded by a headset that basically projects CGI, computer-generated imagery, uh, to your eyes and sometimes controls your, um, your other senses, like sound. Uh, and basically, you're fully immersed in a digital environment, as opposed to augmented reality, or AR, in which you still see the real world. Uh, but that world is being overlaid with digital content and 3D content. And you're looking at the world through some uh, digital see um, I'm sorry, camera see-through, like a camera uh, off a tablet or a phone, or some optical see-through, like glasses or a headset. Uh, and you're basically seeing the world, but again, it has more content created, uh, again, through CGI. An amazing example of that is the amazing movie Space Jam, in which we have Michael Jordan being transported into Looney Town. Everything around him is a cartoon. That's an amazing example of virtual reality, uh, as opposed to what we have later in the movie, and that's augmented reality, in which the Looney Tunes come to us, and we're able to play around with them, I interact with them in the real world, playing basketball, for example. Actual examples of this is something that you've probably known and used, uh, like, um, Pokemon Go, an amazing example of augmented reality when people run around, interact with digital monsters that are not there. Or virtual reality like Beat Saber, if you're slashing digital cubes that are not actually there based on the rhythm of the music. Another amazing example of augmented reality is something that I did back at my time at Columbia University. We took CT and MRI, converted them into 3D, and then put them on these smart glasses called HoloLens by Microsoft for the physician to see the patient's heart floating above them during surgery. Literally, while they're doing the surgery, they'll be able to basically get uh, an insider's view of the patient's anatomy uh, and basically getting this 3D representation, this 3D map of the patient's anatomy while during uh, the surgery. It was an amazing experience for me as an engineer, but I had one problem. Like, I had to go to the hospital every single morning, and that's something I really hate waking up in the morning. So I had to go up to the, to the hospital, take those 2D scans, convert them to 3D models, rebuild the application, um, and have that work. And as a developer, I only wanted to do two things, manage shady assets and deliver them to an AR device. Um, I mean, to swap out a heart for an aorta or a lung, that should be pretty easy. Uh, and when we're talking to other developers who are building augmented reality applications for retail and shopping and healthcare um, and games, obviously, they all said the same thing. There was no easy way to manage and deliver 3D data. But wait, companies have obviously solved this problem for 2D data, right? Like you can use Heroku, this cloud uh, platform to build web applications, or you can use Firebase or Parse to build um, a mobile app. So now we transition from web to mobile uh, to this new kind of technology, which is AR, VR, immersive, MR, call it whatever. And we're trying to figure out what would be the best way uh, to build a cloud platform for that and who is going to build that. And as you guessed it, that's Echo AR, that's what we do. We're a cloud platform for augmented and virtual reality, basically providing tools and our infrastructure for companies and developers who want to build AR VR applications. And today we're going to see really cool demos on how you can build uh, applications in AR VR um, using Echo. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to add them here in the chat or ping us. Um, let's make this as interactive as we can. So think about it. You don't need to be a web developer to update blog post. You can just drag and drop an image or video. Suddenly that appears on web and mobile. And if I'm in New York and you're, let's say, in California and we both watch an episode on Netflix, we automatically get the best streaming experience. 
we translated these concepts into augmented reality, basically providing you with a way to manage and deliver 3D assets and get the best 3D streaming experience. Um, the cool thing about here is like, look how different 3D content is. Like we have this bi-directional connection between content and data. You can't move an image or a video on a website, but you can definitely move a virtual couch across the room and that needs to be updated on the cloud. So that's basically what we've built and that's basically the service that we provide and now you have access for it for free uh, through this hackathon, a content management system and delivery network that's specifically built for 3D assets. Um, you can register through our website or again through the link uh, that we provided so you'll get that um, premium tier for free. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. If not, I'll transition into a really cool demo uh, on how to build the application real quick. So what you see right here on my screen is on the left, you see our console. On the right, you see my phone. I'm going to start with something super simple. I'm going to add a fan favorite 3D model of them for our state right here. This is the same 3D model being used for 3D printing, for example. We have a lot of 3D models here that you can use for different use cases. You can search 3D models all for free. Uh, that will basically be integrated into your application. I'm going to start with something simple like an empire state, uh, but basically it could be anything you'd like. So I'm going to add the empire state. What happens right now is that we take that 3D model, convert it, uh, and compress it. So we'll work on Android, iOS, Magic, PayPal, as you name it. Once that is done, we're able to see the 3D model right here. But the cool thing is that we're able to open, for example, a sample app that if you want, you can download right here. Um, obviously, Developers have their own app, uh, and we'll see later how to build an app like that. But you can start off with just like a sample, uh, a sample app right here. Plug in my API key. It will stream data from the cloud to the device. And basically, we'll be able to see the Empire State right here in my apartment. So there you go. The camera recognizes my floor. And there you go. The Empire State is here with me. I can wrap around it, walk inside. Super, super simple. Um, but what happens if I want to change this? What happens if I, instead of the Empire State, I want some other building? So instead of rebuilding an application, doing anything technical, I'm able to just delete this entry, upload something else, and that will automatically update. So let's try to do that. Let's take this building, for example. Again, same process occurs. We're taking those 3D models, uploading to our cloud, and just making sure that it works everywhere. Once that's done, I'm able to open the exact same app. We don't need to go through the app store. We don't need to rebuild anything, do anything technical. We will just, again, stream that data from the cloud to the device. And then, voila, camera recognizes that there's a floor. And there you go. So let's have that Empire State. Oh, wait. That screen moved a little bit. There you go. Instead of the Empire State, we have this building right here. Wait, sorry about that. My Unity is, yeah, there you go. So we have the Empire State. Have, instead of the Empire State, we have this building right here. Super, super quick. This is a mobile example, basically a native um, Android application that shows you the building. Uh, but we work with clients, for example, that having an app for them made no sense. Uh, we work with an art agency, for example. People would walk in randomly into an art gallery, and they wanted them to see 3D files around them. For that, uh, we allow them to use WebAR, basically a way to do the same thing um, just through a web browser, so you don't have to install anything. So you can go to our website slash WebXR, and we'll stream the data from the cloud to the device. And then the camera, again, instantiates. We're able to see the same 3D model through the browser. We don't have to install anything. This is a quick example of how you can see the same 3D model that we posted. It suddenly works on mobile and web at the same time. Um, but what if I told you that this 3D model actually exists in your phones right now as well? Um, because of the cloud nature of what we do, we are able to stream it to every device anywhere. So if you'd like, um, I recommend scan this QR code with me. If you have a phone, put, put it in front of the screen, uh, open your camera app, scan this QR code. Most camera apps already have some um, built-in you know, QR code reader. If not, um, just use a QR code reader. You redirect it to your website. You don't have to install anything. And you'll be able to see this building right now on the floor of your apartment next to you the same way I'm seeing it. So try that while I'm doing it as well. We'll see the model on our phones again through the browser. Click CNAR, like I'm doing right here. It will instantiate the camera, and there you go. And we'll let's put the let's put the building right here on the table. Super super easy. You can do that yourself. So just all you have to do again, scan this QR code, and you'll be able to see it immediately. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it right here as well, for now. So you can scan and play around with it. So we saw mobile, we saw web, we saw how you can stream it automatically to. Um, to devices anywhere. Um, we work with a company that did like a scavenger hunt in AR. They're able to scan 3D models and only instantiate 3D models around you in videos, and we'll later see examples of that. Uh, but let's go a step further. So we saw uh, mobile, we saw web. Let's see Unity. That's a game engine a lot of developers use. And later in the coding part of this workshop, we're going to see how you can code for Unity. Um, but same thing will occur. Camera will instantiate. The camera will recognize the floor. 
we see the building here on the floor next to me. Let's say we want to animate it in real time. Let's say we want to change something. We can click on this button, basically um, opens the data tab for this card and add some data. So let's add something like, um, let's do, I don't know, direction equals right. Let's do direction equals right. So I'm just adding metadata specifically for this building. I click and there you go. Automatically it starts to rotate, animate in real time. Let's say I want to make it bigger. Let's say scale equals two. Voila, suddenly it's two times bigger. These are obviously like simple examples of interactions, but these are things that you can do in real time. And it goes back to what I told you about how AR is so, uh, and VR are so spatial, how the connection to the cloud needs to be individual per 3D model. It's almost like we had a push notification for this building, this is time to grow, or this is time to rotate. So cool, so we had um, surface detection, this is one AR um, technology, basically camera recognizing that there's a floor, recognizing that floor, it could be a surface, like a wall or, or a table or a chair. Another technology that we support is called image recognition. We see the camera recognizing um, a picture and then overlaying the uh, 3D, mo 3D models and videos on top of that image. Let's see how that works. So what I, what I can do is if I click here and we got this screen, I can do instead of see on the floor, I can do see on an image. Um, if you want, again, you can scan it with me. So just feel free to do that. Place your phone again, just scan this QR code. Let's do that. Come on camera, you can do it. Let's force it to recognize it. There you go. Again, we're gonna be redirected to website. You don't have to install anything. The camera now will recognize this image, like this QR code, as opposed to what we had earlier that we recognized before. And there you go, you see this building shooting out of my screen because it recognized the QR code and overlays that with the QR code. This image doesn't have to be a QR code. It could be anything you want. It could be a magazine, it could be a, your business card, and then people scan it, see a video of you talking, or some um, explanatory video, like we supported another hackathon, which someone did a really cool COVID awareness project in which people would scan um, images and QR codes, and then uh, that will show them videos on um, COVID. Under the hood, it would actually, um, you know, scan how many people um, use the QR code and then enforce social distancing through that. So another cool uh, hackathon idea. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you another example. So we saw how you can use images, and I mentioned you can do custom images, so let's do that. So let's, instead of choosing a 3D model, I'm gonna upload a video. Uh, that video could be, you know, any MP4 file. So I'll do just a random MP4 file. Let's do this one, um, just a cartoon. And now instead of choosing anywhere, I'm gonna do on an image. So I'm gonna basically just add some uh, PNG, some image uh, that could be used as a target. We upload that. Again, it's a very similar process that we had earlier, but instead of 3D models now, we have images and videos that we compress and convert. Once that is done, again, we're just gonna see another extra tab here, another card of data um, right next to, to our 3D model, but now it's a video. Um, so let's scan the QR code again together just to see that, just to instantiate the experience. So you can do that again. If you want, again, if you have a phone in front of you, just use it to scan the QR code. There you go. Again, redirect it to a website. But now you're gonna see that the camera doesn't recognize the, the QR code, right? Because we need to have a custom image instead of that. So now that we have the camera instantiated, this isn't working anymore, but if I open the marker by clicking this image and going to marker, there you go. So we have a video overlaying that 3D model, uh, that QR code or that specific marker. So you can do again, let your imagination run, uh, run wild. You can have any video that you want. You can have like a freaky museum um, that basically shows uh, different images or bringing an image to life with a specific video. Um, another thing that you can do is you can tag locations. For example, if I throw in this um, fox and then I say specific location, I tag it with New York, um, that fox will basically have that extra layer of data of like location. So you can have one generic app. If you open it in New York, it's gonna show you them for a state. If you open it in California or San Francisco, for example, it will show you the Golden Gate Bridge. So having the same app, but just having that extra layer of data being annotated with the coordinates. Um, so, so these are really cool. Again, so we saw, um, let's recap a little bit. So we saw how we can upload content, how we can upload image, how we can have uh, videos, how we can upload uh, 3D models. You can also upload images. So let me maybe throw just a random image here. Um, whatever, let's do that. And let's do on an image as well. Same process, just throwing in an image instead, and that will do the same, um, 
the same thing that the videos did, basically overlay that image on top of um, some kind of custom image. Um, perfect. So we saw that. Um, what else can we what else can we play with? So we're going to dive deep into the coding in a bit. But basically, here you're able to download all the SDKs, some Unity examples, uh, and, and uh, Flutter examples, basically pre-built code that you can start working with. And later, we're going to see how useful that is. Um, we have our GitHub page that has a lot of really, really cool demos and starter code that you can play around with and build your application. Uh, I'm going to share just a few. Um, for example, let's do this, this, um, this, this, and this. So there's a bunch of open source code here that you can have, like streaming a video in a 3D model inside uh, Unity, seeing things uh, in real time. We'll see that in a sec. Um, you're able to create face tracking stuff if you want with our code. This is me saying hello with a really cool pair of glasses. Um, this is a COVID visualizer that later we're going to rebuild together in the coding part of this workshop. We have a home exercise that you can build, basically a really cool 3D application that basically streams a a, a, a to show you how to exercise at home. Uh, so many use cases that you can do. Another living room inside a living room. If you want to Netflix and chill with this thing, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, we also have a freaky museum. You can scan a, a, a image. It comes to life with this cool video uh, and so on and so forth. Remote work obviously is a big thing now, so you can create that as well. So these are really cool examples that you have. Um, all are accessible again through our GitHub. We have a link right here in the help menu. Also, our documentation is super useful. Definitely go through it. It goes literally step by step with everything I did, um, but with GIFs and, 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 and really cool um, explanatory information of how to recreate everything I just did. Um, another cool thing that I can show you um, and maybe um, maybe I'll upload the maybe you'll use that. Uh, you can also share these QR codes and share this um, share these models automatically. So just click this button, you'll get this really quick um, link that you can share with people. Just make sure they open it on their mobile device, and then we'll be able to play around with it. I'm going to share it here, but just make sure you open it uh, with your mobile device, and then you'll be able to see this apartment building. Uh, this is detailed here in our documentation as well. Definitely check it out. It will generate automatically if you share it on social media and stuff like that, which generate a QR code to go along with it to scan it for your mobile device. OK, so we saw mobile. We saw web. We saw um, how you can upload models, videos, images. We saw how you can put that on the floor, how you can put it on an image. Um, what else can you do? Switch a theme, obviously, really cool, dark being the default. You can add data, as we discussed earlier. You can add data to the specific content, or you can have some global data. For example, we worked with some company, we did like a scavenger hunt in AR, like a murder mystery kind of thing. So you'd have data associated with each content, so which, what's seen in the mystery game are they attached to, but also just random data that works with every, like the entire project. Payments is a really cool page to, again, you're gonna see that you get this business tier for free, so definitely utilize that. Um, and you're gonna see how you're using your plan, how much bandwidth, storage, API here is you're making to basically monitor your usage of the project. Uh, locations is a really cool uh, page. Remember, we added that Fox in New York, so you can check out your content distribution around the world. For example, here we have this Arctic Fox in New York. We see which servers are supporting that streaming of data. Um, you can see how people are using your data. So right now we haven't streamed the Fox, but then you should see a spike the minute people start streaming the Fox. You'll be able to see your content in the US is really popular. Security is a cool page. You're able to add users to your project, basically create a team project, um, enable, disable some security features. Insight is an amazing page that shows you a lot of information about your project and application. So for example, we just um, streamed the apartment building. There you go. We have a spike of usage and how much people um, stream this building. Um, really, really cool stuff. Again, how much you're using, some project history that you can check. Users is a, another cool page that shows you how people are using your applications around the world, where your users are coming from, if it's uh, Mexico, or US, or France, or whatnot. Uh, tutorials is a cool page. A lot of frequently asked questions that you can just plug yourself in, click on something, see um, automatically answers in our documentation. Definitely check that out. Um, and the, my favorite page, the inspiration page, that has so many amazing use cases of augmented virtual reality. Some are powered with Echo AR, some are not. Um, for example, the art project that I mentioned, or the murder mystery game, or some cool project we did with Verizon 5G. Um, there's so many projects here around um, games, and healthcare, and education, and surgery, 
in, in space even, uh, in data visualization, in shopping and retail. So definitely check those um, projects out. Uh, we also have, like, for him, a few projects that, that were um, created during uh, different hackathons, the ones that I mentioned around COVID. These are really cool projects that we're happy to feature on our page. So if you build something, make sure to um, ping us so we'll be able to feature you as well. Um, some use uh, 3D models, some use video, some use image targets like here, some use um, surface detection, some use Unity, which we'll dive into a sec. Um, but there's really, really a lot of cool uh, examples of how you can utilize augmented reverse reality. So definitely check that out. If there's any questions, feel free to add them in the chat. And if not, I'll continue to um, a really cool technical demo with Unity and how you can build an application. So feel free to write questions. If not, I'll just continue. So this is Unity. It's a game engine, uh, pretty straightforward, um, has a lot of no code aspects to it that's really easy to learn. Um, in order to integrate that, all you have to do is download Unity, it's free. Then download our SDK right here, just click that, double click on the file that you get, and that will automatically be imported into your uh, project. After that, you'll have um, the Echo AR folder here, you can go to examples and then open this empty scene. There's nothing here. The scene is completely empty, aside for um, this Echo AR game object, for example. Um, what I'm going to do now is uh, maybe I'll clean my console a little bit because now we're going to get all of these things. But you know, let's 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 maybe see how how that looks. Um, so now I'm going to press play. Oh, sorry, I didn't plug in my API key. So first things first, I'm going to plug in my API key here, and then I'm going to press play. Now all the content that we have in our console will stream automatically to Unity. So we're going to expect it to see um, the fox and the building and the video and the image. So let's see how that works. Let's give it a sec. There you go. Oh, sorry, I misspelled my key, so it didn't work. There you go. Now it's going to work. Yeah, it's a key not found. There you go. What did I do? Oh, oops, sorry about that. Blue water. There you go. Play. So now what we have is Unity connecting to our cloud. We stream the data back. So we see, there you go. We have the, the building rotating. We have the fox right here. We have the video playing. We have the image. Let's sort them a little bit because they're a little disjointed. So let's maybe delete the video. So you'll see that because it's connected to the cloud, it's going to um, be diminished automatically. Again, if I'm going to delete this image, it's going to disappear automatically as well. Um, but let's see, okay, now, for example, the, the fox is occluding, is being occluded by the building. So let's move it a little bit. Let's, we know how to do that, right? Let's add data. For example, f equals 10. Let's move the fox 10 feet away from the building. There we go. Um, the cool thing about this, that if I stop Unity from running, everything disappears. The scene becomes empty again, and nothing actually persists in memory. That means that your apps can be super, super small, and the content will be retrieved from the cloud. And another cool thing is when I press play again, we're going to see the same building in Fox again, but you're, you're going to notice that we actually see them at the same um, state that we had before, right? Suddenly the Fox is 10 feet away from the building. The building is still rotating. Um, these are really cool examples to see how our console is basically a stateful content management system. It basically conserves the state of your scene. So if you reload the application, everything persists. Uh, we have a question here. So can object in the AR go beyond object in the real world, or can it not detect that? Uh, it really depends on the platform and the camera you're using. So for example, the web one that I showed you um, has something called occlusion, so it recognizes real world objects and basically able to render them as if they're behind the object. Other cameras, like the, um, the mobile one that I showed you, does not do that. So it really depends on what technology of camera you're using. Again, from our perspective, you're able to stream to every camera. Um, you just need to make sure that your camera SDK supports um, occlusion, that going behind real world objects. But good, good question, Noah. Uh, perfect. So we saw how we can stream images, how we can stream videos, how we can stream uh, 3D models. Um, let's delete that building and let's keep the fox and let's recenter it a little bit. And then let's do like a really quick uh, coding example. Um, so we have the fox here. It's going to be uh, right the center of the scene. Um, the cool thing about that fox, right now it's being called um, Arctic Fox. OK, perfect. Every single 3D model, every single asset that you're going to stream into Unity will have a cool script called custom behavior. This is a script that you can uh, change, and we're going to change right now together in order to create basically any feature, add any, um, anything that you'd like. 
like we added animations of like rotations and movement. Um, so let's see how we can change that to affect something in this scene. So um, Unity um, uses C Sharp. If you know C Sharp, that's amazing. If you know Java or any other object-oriented language, you're pretty much good to go. Um, it's pretty easy to use. Um, so this is a script in Unity format. It has basically two um, important functions. One is called start, evident by its name. It's being called when you start the application. Um, what we have here, for example, is that we add another script to the, um, to the game object. That's the game object that's being created. That script is the script that we added so you'll be able to remotely um, rotate it or, or change its location or, or uh, scale it. And another code snippet right here says something interesting. It says, um, if our entry has any additional data and that data has a character, is, has a key called name, set the name of the object to that name. It's pretty straightforward. So that's the start function. Another super important function is the update function. This function is amazing. It happens every single frame. Remember, you're coding in 3D, which means we have this animation being rendered. We have this like almost like a 3D video being rendered in your um, camera, which means that there's frames here. And this function is being called every single frame. Uh, every snippet of code that you're going to put here will happen every time the camera tries to render something. It, it literally runs every less than a millisecond. Um, the cool thing about this is that because it happens every single frame, you need to remember your algos and remember your um, performance-oriented uh, coding. If this function hangs, your entire application hangs. If this uh, function is too uh, performance heavy, your entire application is performance heavy. So take that in consideration when you're building your application. Um, but okay, so now we know the code. Let's, um, let's see what it does, right? Let's, now that we have this, we have the start function. Um, we know that it expects the name. So let's add a name. What's a good name for a fox? We have, let's say, Kevin. That's a good name for a fox. Now when I press play, we're going to see, again, the fox that we're used to seeing. But now, there you go. Suddenly it's named Kevin instead of being named Arctic Fox. Super easy. There you go. We did it. We changed something in the application. Um, let's change the name of the fox to Sam instead of Kevin. But wait, it didn't change. Why is that? Because we had that snippet of code exist in the start function, only when we start the application. So if we restart it, we'll see, um, we'll be able to see the fox right here in front of us. There you go. Now it's called Sam, but I had to restart the application. One thing that we can do to change the code is maybe take that snippet of code, let's do that together, and plug that in into the update function instead. So I'm going to crop that, put it right here. Justify the code a little bit, save. So now that snippet of code will be executed every single frame instead of being executed just, um, just once. So let's see that. Pressing play again, we're going to see Sam the Fox um, appear in a sec. So there we go. Recompile the app. There we go. Perfect. So now we have Sam the Fox. But now where we're going to actually change it. To Kev back to Kevin, bam, automatically changed to Kevin. So this is obviously like a really, really, really simple example. Um, but again, let your imagination run wild. You can do whatever you'd like. Here we change the name, uh, but it could be anything. You can use these flags to control uh, feature flows, to control uh, if is true or false, and run through applications. Super, super easy. Um, we have a few questions in the chat. Would you recommend finding 3D models to incorporate so as I mentioned, right here in the console itself, you can search for 3D models. So we have a few that we mentioned. Let's say you want to, I don't know, you have, want to have a globe, because that goes along with something that I have later. So you can literally just add it here. Um, and then we fetch that from content aggregators like poly.google.com or Sketchfab. So there you go. We wrote globe, and we have all these examples of a globe. So just use that um, search engine. Or again, you can go directly to those 3D content aggregators that I mentioned, like poly.google.com or Sketchfab. We have another question. Uh, would it be easy to control and add sprites? Yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. So the way that you can do that is, um, remember I uploaded 2D images. So you can actually, through your code, just write a really quick, sh a quick script in the custom behavior that if it's, a, um, if it's an image, convert that into a sprite. Um, so, so definitely check that out. Um, really, really easy. 
because again, you can import 2D images automatically into Unity as well. Um, and if you want to do with facing based viewport, yeah. Um, so we have this example right here of um, Unity with AR Foundation already integrated with Echo AR. Check out this sample code because this sample code also has the uh, face recognition kind of example that you can throw in any sprite you want and basically have a face filter using that. So check this example out as well, and then you're able to stream data to that. Good questions. Um, perfect. Um, what else do we have? Um, so we saw this really cool, simple example of how you can change things. Uh, let's have a more complicated example. Again, the one that I wanted to recreate um, right here. Yeah, I, I'm going to recreate this example with you all in Unity. So what do we need? So we need a globe. So let's delete the fox. Let's throw in a globe. I have one pre-prepared. Now I'm going to upload a file instead of searching one right here. I'm going to just um, upload a file just to show you that that's possible as well. So there we go, uploading that into our console. Super, super easy. Um, what else do we, um, do we have? So now that we have that 3D model, I'm going to swap out the custom behavior script. I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to just swap that under the hood. And then we're going to go through it together. Um, now that we have the beautiful Earth right here, uh, maybe let's just add things to make it a little lively. Let's do like direction equals left, scale it a little bit. And there you go. Okay, now let's look at the custom behavior script. So custom behavior script has changed. Let's see that. There you go. So what do we have here? Suddenly we have um, more um, data structures, some arrays, um, some dictionary, scale, another data structure. Okay, um, going through all the continent names. I know that I'm going to go through all the continents and add some data. So let's do that automatically together. Let's just throw in some random data together right here. So that will be like a COVID visualizer. It will basically have every continent will have some number corresponding to the number of cases. Um, and we'll be able to control that um, remotely. So let's throw in some uh, random numbers. Doesn't really matter. There we go. Perfect. Um, so now we have the start function looks exactly the same that we had earlier. Um, add some tra transformations. Um, name also exists. But now the update function is much more interesting. In the other function, we see we're asking, do we have any additional data? If we do, let's take the scale additional data and parse it out into an integer, because we want to use it later. Um, then let's iterate over all continents, see, do, do, does our additional data contain an entry for a continent? If it does, I'm the code editor that I'm using is Visual Studio Code, and it's the best. Um, definitely recommend Visual Studio Code. Um, so we, we iterate over all continents, check if we have an entry for the continent. If we do, we parse that continent um, case number to, to an actual number, to an integer. Um, and then we say, do we have a graph for it? If we do, scale it up, change it based on the number of cases. If, if we don't have it, let's create a graph, let's create a cylinder, let's color it, let's um, move it a little bit, transform it, um, scale it, add a text to it, um, transform that text. And if we don't have a data entry for that, let's destroy the graph. Super simple. Let's see what happens when you press play. So we're going to press play. Again, we have this building right here, and we have the data that we created in our custom behavior script. I'm pressing play, and automatically data is being streamed. We're going to see the, the there you go. Perfect. So what do we see here? We see the globe. We see all these cases right here basically aligned with uh, the random numbers that we gave for um, the cases. Super simple. How cool is that? We just created a cool uh, COVID visualizer in five minutes. Um, and you can take it to the next level. You can take this code, it's open source, and basically integrate that to, let's say, a third-party API from WHO to actually have actual numbers of the cases. And then if I change it here, let's say, for example, let's change our Antarctica instead of three, let's make it six. Boom, it updates in real time, right? Super quick, super easy. Uh, if I delete Antarctica, boom, it disappears. So these are really uh, quick and automatic, again, this is the nature of AR VR experiences that we're trying to cultivate through our cloud, rapidly changing, dynamic, uh, and you can definitely take advantage of that. Um, we have, uh, it changes automatically. Wow, yeah, it's definitely easier. Um, how did he get into VR? Oh, that's an amazing story. I'm going to tell it in a sec. Crying about Antarctica, same here. Peace and love to all the people in Antarctica. Um, so yeah, rip Antarctica. No, let's, let's put it back. Oh my god. 
I mean, it's actually bad because we're adding COVID cases to Antarctica, but like whatever. Uh, how I got into AR VR, so I did, again, I did my master's at Columbia uh, University specifically in AR VR, um, like computer science, but specifically interested in computer science and AR and VR. And that was a transformative experience. And I learned so much about like Unity and, and, and human computer interaction specifically. And did that project that I mentioned in the beginning of the, of the talk uh, around surgical um, information. And, and, and this is something I'm obviously very passionate about. Um, any other questions? Yeah, feel free to, to write them in the chat. Um, are those options for working with Eclair outside Unity Syrup? Yeah, so as, as we saw earlier, we do support like the web, um, like the web AR and the ARJS, the ones that I showed you with the QR codes or the scanning of the QR codes, you see that on the floor or Android or, or native, like there's all these SDKs here that you can use. Uh, Flutter is another example that you can use. Um, would Echo work with WebAR? So what, yeah, it will definitely will. Um, we also have a RESTful API. If I go to our documentation right here, by the way, there's a RESTful API that can work with anything. If you are working with like some obscure game engine that I've never heard of or um, something that we don't support, just use, just, you can query everything to just, you know, HTTP queries and you'll see that. Uh, under the hood, all our SDKs, what they actually do is they just query our servers and then they give you this blurb of data about the, the content that you're hosting. Like for example, uh, where's Antarctica, our favorite, our favorite content? There you go, it's here. So like, you can just do RESTful queries and just um, basically, you know, parse that information and use it in whatever capacity you want. But, but we have all these SDKs for like the, you know, top platforms that already have ARVR, like uh, Android and, and Unity and stuff like that. Uh, I know, we'll never be the same. Oh. Um, yeah, so we have a Java SDK as well. Um, is there a suggested get in North? There is. Uh, if you use GitHub, um, when you create a project, it will suggest um, types of Git ignores, and one of them is Unity, and it's really, really uh, useful because then it takes a lot of the garbage away. Unity is, is a, like, as a game engine, it creates a lot of temporary files, so definitely try to avoid that. Um, and again, another cool thing is if I stop this, um, going back to Unity here, if I stop this, everything disappears, right? Nothing actually persists on memory as we saw earlier. Uh, if I'll restart it, we'll see everything returns to the same state, the same data, and everything uh, is automatic. Um, again, if you want to add, um, let's say we want to change the Antarctica, because um, that's our favorite. If we want to change it through a uh, RESTful API call, we can also do that, right? So I don't, I don't have to do that through an entry. I can just build an app that changes that autom automatically. And then if I do like post and entry, and again, this is all in our documentation. Um, and I do data equals Antarctica, let's copy that. And if I do data equals Antarctica and value equals, I don't know, instead of three, let's do 10. Boom, we have an additional data and then automatically it jumped, right? So this is just a cool HTTP request that I can do like the RESTful API request that will change things remotely. So let's say, again, you wanna expand on this application, you can do that. You don't have to automatically like click things on the console. It's just easier for the content creators among us uh, who don't want to do um, technical stuff. Perfect. Any more questions? Um, Daryl's asking, does the API provide a way to cache the assets locally? Um, no, because that's a little bit negating the point of like having a cloud not to put these things locally. Like we do want them to come from the cloud and not persist on memory. Um, if you want, like if you, once they are in, um, in Unity, you can change custom behavior to cache them yourself if you want. Like you can have like some FBX importer or an OBJ importer to basically, um, you know, like save that asset, like save that mesh if you want, but I don't see why you should do that. Um, but if you want, that's a possibility that you can do through code. Um, oh, thank you, yes. Uh, we just shared the, the, the link for the registration. So definitely take advantage of that because if you use this link, you automatically get free premium access to our platform. So check that out. Um, any other questions? So far, amazing questions, everyone. And I, I love the, the love that we all share for Antarctica. Uh, okay, so I'm going back to the slides right here. Uh, if there's any more questions, uh, feel free to jump in. So let's recap. So what do we see so far? So you as a developer can use any camera SDK that you want. If it's Android, iOS, Magic Tape, Hollands, you name it. Um, if you um, are a chronic creator, you don't want to do a lot of technical stuff, you can just drag and drop things through the console. Uh, if you're a developer and working with a technical, with a non-technical person, you can again, have the non-techies manage the content remotely uh, with you just doing the code. We'll build, store, and deliver that content to everything. Um, 
if it's headsets, if it's mobile devices, if it's web browsers, we saw those examples in the beginning in the no code portion of the workshop that we stream things to web and Unity and, and mobile. Um, obviously, we recommend Unity as the best because like our SDK is the most robust and Unity as a general thing just allows you to do more and more things to add interactions. Um, but, but yeah, that could be anything. Yeah, Mano is asking, can these 3D models be hosted on HTML? Yes. Yeah, so for sure. So um, even in our, um, like the same way we did the, the integration, so you can have these like scene viewer or ARJS be just embedded into your website if you'd like. It's really easy with an iframe. Um, here specifically, we're explaining how to do that um, in ARJS, but scene viewer is also a possibility if you would like um, to basically integrate the same QR code thing that I showed you. You can put that in as an iframe. Um, so for example, if you put, um, like when I shared this thing, if I take this link and I put this as an iframe, like the source of an iframe, you'll just get that cool kind of website within a website that you can just see a 3D model floating around. It's super, super easy. Uh, so check that out as well. Uh, and then you can have like an app and basically mimic our, you know, layout or whatever. Um, yeah, hashtag Antarctica gang, obviously. Um, Programmers for making custom models. Um, so there are a few. There's something called Tinkercad. We actually have a list of them somewhere here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, but you can use Tinkercad. Oh, there you go. So we can have, so if you want to find 3D models outside of our search engine, we have all these different content aggregators. If you want to create models, you have Tinkercad, which is free, Blender, Maya, all these different um, like services. Uh, but I love specifically Tinkercad. It's pretty easy. Can you import animated models? Uh, so in Unity, specifically in Unity, no. In general, um, so there's two things. If you want to upload a pre-animated GLB, for example, to our platform, you can do that, and that will work on web. In Unity specifically, their engine is the one that controls animation, so Unity as a whole doesn't um, support pre-animated 3D models. Um, but you can animate them in Unity. Um, so just take that in consideration or again, just use web instead of unity and that will be animated, um, automatically. Like if I upload, um, let's do that. That will be fun. I think I have some 3d model of a really cute, um, unicorn right here. Let's see if I can find it like some dancing something. Yeah, there you go. If I do this, so this is the, I'm going to upload a 3d model, a, a really, really cool 3d model right here. So let's give it a sec to upload. And then um, if I scan this, let's see that. So this is an anime, like I know that it's pre-animated um, to true work, but I, but I thought that the animation will persist in the Unity. Um, wait, so let's see if you can see my, um, yeah, so yeah, I think this should dance a little bit. Yeah, so you see uh, it's not moving. It should have animated, I don't know why it's not. But basically, again, like so animations are a little, again, they're a little iffy when it comes to bringing in animations or game engines because most of them like to control the animation engine themselves. Uh, what is a GLB? So GLB is just a file format. It's like OBJ, GLTF. These are different file formats of 3D. Uh, you don't have to worry about that at all. We convert everything to everything under the hood. So when we uploaded, like, I don't know, the Skyscraper, that version already had um, like OBJ, GLT, like all these different file formats for AR, when you press play in Unity, we'll bring you what you need. Same thing with web, same thing with like, we take care of like that cross-platform capability. Um, yeah, the, the, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so we actually mentioned um, in our docs, this is the guide. Every question, do you have extra? Uh, everything is here in, in our documentation. Um, but these are just file formats. So for example, if you go here um, to our content pages and talk about holograms, you'll see what 3D models we support. So OBJ, GLB, like these are all the abbreviations. These are just extensions of files that are specifically in 3D, like MP4 or PNG. Good question. Okay, going back to the slides. Uh, what about an AR game? Yeah, you can build an AR game. And um, specifically, as I mentioned here, we have open sourced a bunch of really, really cool examples of AR that you can jump in. Uh, we have a really extensive car racing game that you can build if you want. Um, pretty cool. It has like buttons and you can like have a car driving an AR. It's pretty cool. So if you want to build a game, you can start with that as a starter code. Yeah. Hot Wheels. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Hot Wheels rocks. Um, okay. So let's go back to the slides. Perfect. Uh, so we discussed how that works. 
developers obviously save time and money on uh, building their app backend. Again, you don't have to hook up a server. You don't have to, well, you don't have to hook up a server. You don't have to um, um, have any technical skills, right? To just drag and drop stuff. Um, and companies that we work with obviously scale to enterprise level in which they're able to stream data all over the world and we facilitate that communication. Um, as we mentioned, we love supporting a lot of augmented reality use cases like we showed in the inspiration page, if it's surgery or internet navigation or, or, or ads or tourism or shopping or games, anything. You're limited only by imagination. Start building really, really cool stuff with Echo AR because we're super excited to see what you can build. A little bit of us as a company, uh, we're backed by some of the top investors in the country. If it's uh, Techstars or Remap Adventures or Verizon, uh, we won a bunch of awards and we're there for all the major um, tech events. So if you're around, um, definitely find me or our team at some point once things get back to normal and conferences are actually a thing. We love to say that we are the track that facilitates content across all these um, horses. If it's again, Android, iOS, Magically, um, whatnot. Um, we're being asked, where can we find the FAQ? Oh, cool question, as I mentioned. So if you go to the console, there's two things. There's one, the tutorials page that literally has question, this is like an FAQ, or click the help menu, documentation right here, goes to docs.our website, and then you have literally everything. Every page here goes literally, like every step that I did here live, here you have a robust um, guide, step-by-step, -step and how to do it with GIFs and everything. So check that out. I'm gonna share that link here. There we go. Um, going back to the slides. And there you go. So make sure you register, use the link that was provided here in the chat to get that freemium uh, tier for free. Thank you so much for being at this workshop. I'm super, super excited to see what you're gonna build with Echo. Um, again, let your imagination wild wild. There's so many amazing things that you can build in 3D. Um, that are like unbelievable check out the project that we have on our github um, channel and as well um always feel free to reach out through our slack there's a link here to register to our slack our support team is ready to answer any questions i'll be i'll hang around as well to answer any questions in our slack so just click here go to our support channel on our slack and just ask questions if you're having any trouble um thank you so much for being here stay safe healthy and strong if there's any um any sammy i love your comments if there's any uh, questions, anything, feel free to reach out. Um, my email is here as well. Uh, and again, Slack is the most responsive way for us to all talk. Um, have an amazing hackathon. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here. So honored to sponsor this hackathon. Have a good one, everyone.